by placing a bet on their own side to lose. Though the FA accepted, there was no question of the result itself having been rigged. The FA's chief executive announced the, the verdict and the punishments the within the last hour. Upon Mr B. Hillier, the suspension of six months from all forms of football and football management, and upon Mr Lou Macari, a fine of £1,000 and a censure. Despite today's findings, it's clear that Lou McCarry will be staying on as West Ham's manager. The club have just issued a statement saying that the fine imposed upon him shows that his involvement was minimal. Now they just want him to get on with his job. A few minutes ago, McCarry finally left Lancaster Gate, silent and all but lost in an unseemly scrum of photographers and cameramen. And that was the six o'clock news. Game of breaking FA rules on betting match on matches. The club has been fined seven and a half thousand pounds. Mr. Hillier was in the dock at the Football Association's headquarters in London over allegations that he backed Swindon to lose in an FA Cup tie two years ago. The club's former manager, Lou Macari, was found guilty on the same charge. He escaped a ban but was fined a thousand pounds and censured. Martin Graham Scott now reports from London. After nearly four hours, the FA has found Swindon Town club chairman Brian Hillier and Lou Macari, the former manager, guilty of breaching an FA rule for betting on a football match. Brian Hillier was suspended for six months from all forms of football and football management. Macari was fined £1,000 and given a censure, and the club was fined £7,500. The FA said it regarded contravention of its rule of misconduct as serious. We regard it as serious and we've imposed appropriate penalties. Earlier, independent witness Dave King, the former club secretary who was sacked from the club last month, said he was deeply saddened. Sad day for Swindon Town Football uh, Club. Um, I wish the, the club no harm. I've loved the football club all my life and um, I just hope that from now on that things will settle down and they can go on to gain promotion to the first division. The allegations centred around an FA Cup game between Swindon and Newcastle United in January 1988. A Sunday newspaper claimed Hillier had won £4,000 by betting on Newcastle to win, showing a cheque made out to him by Ladbrokes. Many people in football circles will regard the punishments meted out to Hillier and Macari as being light. But the problems to Swindon Town don't end here. It still faces a football league inquiry into alleged under-the-counter payments to players. For that, it could face another fine or have points docked, enough to wreck this season's promotion challenge. Well, after the hearing, neither Mr Hillier nor Mr Macari were available to comment. But tonight, Carol Embry, the woman who failed in her bid to take over Swindon Town Football Club, said Mr Hillier should resign. I think not only Mr Hillier, I think any directors who had knowledge of the bet, um, and you're only telling me that he's been charged and no other individual director, I think should resign. Um, it's not fair just for him to take it. And what about the fine against Swindon Town? I think that's totally unfair. Totally. I don't know the conditions of it, but I don't see why the football club should be fined. Today's events at Lancaster Gate have cast a shadow over Swindon's success on the pitch. As Rob Gillis reports, during the past six years, the club has climbed from obscurity to become one of the main challengers for first division status. The partnership between Lou Macari and Brian Hillier was to prove one of the most successful in the club's history. In the space of five seasons, it took Swindon Town from the fourth to the brink of the first division, only narrowly missing out on promotion to Crystal Palace in last season's playoffs. Lou Macari joined as player-manager in the summer of 84 after a glittering career with Celtic, Manchester United and Scotland. Brian Hillier, a local businessman with his own building firm, took over as Swindon's chairman in October. Macari was sacked in April but reinstated after just five days following a campaign by players and supporters. His commitment to the club was total. He bought a house in the area and his children attended local schools. His policy of hard training and strict discipline brought results a goal-scoring spree and Swindon's meteoric rise up the divisions. The partnership ended in July last year when Macari joined West Ham. He signed for the Hammers after his name had been linked for the succession of top clubs. Then the success story began to turn sour. In August 1989 there was a takeover attempt to oust Hillier, led by former programme sales organiser Carol Embury. 
Then came the newspaper allegations of a betting scandal, leading to the pair appearing before the Football Association today. Further newspaper allegations this month led to the sacking of club secretary Dave King, who was at today's hearing. Meanwhile, Swindon's current manager, Ozzy Ardiles, must carry on regardless. His job? To win promotion to Division One and get the headlines back where they belong, on the club and its successes. Was found guilty at an FA tribunal in London today of betting on his side to lose the cup match. Hillier's suspension will keep him out of the game until August. The club's former manager, Lou Macari, who was also accused of betting on the club's game against Newcastle two years ago, has been fined £1,000 and he was censured. And the Swindon club itself have been fined £7,500. Simon Whitby has been following developments at the FA in London throughout the day. This is a serious case for Swindon and the Football Association. The repercussions could be grave, and that's why the FA are giving this case such importance with a three-man disciplinary tribunal in the grand and imposing headquarters of the game's ruling body. It's all over Swindon's FA Cup game with Newcastle in January 1988. Swindon were thrashed 5-0, and late last year, a Sunday newspaper claimed that a bet had been placed that Swindon would in fact lose. It's claimed that a £6,500 bet was placed with a Cheltenham bookmaker and that £4,000 was made on the wager. That's against FA rules. Section 4 says it's misconduct to bet on any football match other than on authorised and registered football pools. The Football Association have almost limitless powers to deal with such breaches. Swindon Town could be fined or even relegated from the second division, where they have a good chance of promotion. Mr. Macari and Mr. Hillier could be fined or even banned from football. Today, the pair arrived early at FA headquarters, avoiding the large contingent of TV and press gathering at the front entrance. Lionel Smart, one of Swindon's directors, arrived just before one o'clock, closely followed by Dave King, the former secretary, who was sacked in January. He had been called to give evidence to the tribunal. Are you, you looking forward to seeing Mr. Hillier? What's happened? No, not, I'm not a vindictive sort of person. I just, I just want to determine one way or another there's some sort of justice that comes into what happened. Are you looking forward to seeing Brian Hillier again? Um, I have no thoughts whatsoever on Mr. Brian He doesn't even enter my mind, to be quite honest. And yet he's the man who, who dismissed you, isn't he? That's his problem. Well, our reporter, Simon Whitby, is still in London at the FA, so let's rejoin him now for the very latest developments and reactions. So over the to London. Lasted for hours. Brian Hillier and Lou Macari The FA gave... announced its result. Guilty. A £7,500 fine for Swindon Town. A ban of six months for Mr Hillier and a £1,000 fine and a censure for Mr Macari. The punishments are severe but they're not wholly unexpected nor as serious as the FA could have imposed. Swindon Town could have been relegated from Division 2. As it is, Swindon Town can now concentrate on football matters even if they are £7,500 worse off this evening. Our news that the chairman of Swindon Town Football Club has been banned from the game for six months. Brian Hillier was found guilty this afternoon by the FA for placing a bet on his own side to lose a cup tie. Swindon's former manager, Lou Macari, was also found guilty of the same offence. He wasn't banned but fined £1,000 and severely censured. The club itself will have to pay a £7,500 fine. This report now from David Passmore. Witnesses started arriving at the FA headquarters soon after midday. Chairman Brian Hillier and the former manager Lou Macari, who's now joined West Ham, avoided waiting reporters by going in the back way. The FA investigation followed newspaper allegations that Mr Hillier placed a bet on Swindon to lose this cup tie against Newcastle United two years ago. Swindon lost 5-0 and Mr Hillier received a cheque for £4,000. He said the bet was placed as an insurance policy against travel costs. FA officials arrived at the county ground before Christmas. There followed a split within the board as Mr Hillier reduced the number of directors from nine to five to consolidate his support. Late this afternoon, though, came the verdict. There have been breaches of FA rule 26A4. Afterwards, the former club secretary, Dave King, sacked by the club for talking to the press, said it was a sad day for the football club. But what of his future? I don't know. <laughs> um, I've gone back home now and um, also, also await the outcome of um, whatever sentences have passed this afternoon. 
But they, as, long, as far as I'm concerned, I mean, it indicates um, an awful lot of good people that work for some time football club. Tonight, the future for Brian Hillier is uncertain. But West Ham said that Lou Macari would continue as their manager. David Passmore, BBC West, on the Swindon Town betting scandal. Yesterday's FA disciplinary hearing into Swindon's betting scandal, which led to Mr Hillier being banned from football for six months. And today, the club's former secretary, who gave evidence at the hearing, received a death threat. Simon Whitby reports. Mr Hillier was up early this morning, despite his long and busy day in London yesterday. He left his Wiltshire home for Swindon's county ground to meet players and officials. He was saying nothing about his ban. Today, it was business as usual at Swindon's county ground. The players and officials and Mr Hillier boarded a coach for London for their Zenith Data Systems Cup game with Crystal Palace. But while the players may be concentrating on football, the behind-the-scenes politics won't go away. There are renewed calls for Mr Hillier and other members of the board to resign. Mr Hillier has 14 days in which to appeal against the FA's decision. If he doesn't, his ban comes into force on February the 26th. Yesterday, the FA ruled that Swindon, Mr Hillier and their former manager, Lou Macari, broke the rules by betting on Swindon to lose a match. The FA said the penalties were appropriate. Today, Swindon supporters had differing views. I reckon Macari should have got more. Uh, he only got a grand, didn't he? And nearly got six months ban, and they're both in it. So you think what they did was wrong? I think it was, yeah. Uh, it would probably be a little demo, I don't know, on Sunday. Yeah, you know probably I mean? will be. Against West Ham. Just, just people are just cheesed off of it, now. You know what I mean? He should go. I You're don't think he should step down. I, no, I don't. I think he's done a lot for this club. And I think that should be taken into consideration. And I think, really, that, uh, you know, if he steps down for the time being, but I think he's done far too much for this club just to have this one thing put against him. I don't think it was done with any other intention than having the club in mind. He's done a sort of good, I think, <laughs> over the years, so... So you're confident <coughs> in him? Oh, yes, yes. I would say so. Chris Scott, chairman of Swindon Supporters Association, says there are still questions to be answered. I, I believe Brian Hillier has a great deal of explaining to do to the um, shareholders, to the supporters, to the chap who pays his four pound to go to, through the uh, turnstile, um, if he's going to regain confidence and uh, goodwill. I think that any director who knew about the bet um, should have the same punishment as Brian Hillier. I don't think it's fair that it's just him to have the punishment. I think they all should. In another development, Swindon's former secretary, Dave King, who gave evidence at yesterday's hearing, received a death threat last night. Um, when we got home um, yesterday evening, um, my wife answered the telephone call, and a voice on the telephone call said to her, you're dead. Um, she was quite shocked. Um, the matter was reported to the police. And uh, we've not received um, any calls like that since. Um, strange enough, just as I mentioned, the young, we just had a call with no voice on the end. But, um, you know, they're, they're common occurrence for us. Tonight, the Swindon players are concentrating on football. And on Sunday, there's the irony of the game between Swindon and West Ham a match between Lou Macari's and Brian Hillier's clubs. Plans for a multi-million pound... ...palace. Chairman Brian Hillier travelled with the squad, but maintained his silence over the FA's punishment. Yesterday, Mr Hillier, the second of the two men here, was banned from the game for six months for betting on his own side to lose a cup tie. Former manager Lou Macari was fined £1,000 and the club £7,500 for the same offence. All have 14 days to appeal. Good morning, this is John Kay on Wiltshire Today, former Swindon Town Club Secretary... This morning on a BBC local radio phone-in involving the former club secretary Dave King and the supporters club chairman Chris Scott, there were calls for Mr Hillier to resign. I feel surely despite appeals and everything else, it's really time that they sort of bit the bullet and the whole damn board resigned. Chris Scott was more restrained. He wants a full shareholders meeting. Uh, Brian Hillier really has got a lot of explaining to do to the shareholders and the supporters, the people who pay their money to go and stand in the wet and the people that travel to places like Barnsley and, and Leeds and uh, sp spend huge amounts of money and huge amounts of time in, in, in following a, a club which is just about on the verge of the first division. 
Carol Embry, the woman who tried to take over the club last year, wants Mr Hillier to resign and is angry that the club has been punished. I was disgusted that the club had a fine. Um, I think they're the innocent people in this. Certainly the supporters who spent money to go to Newcastle are the innocent people. And I think the club is, and I don't understand why they've had a fine. Former Secretary Dave King says the harassment he's suffered since he was sacked continued last night with a death threat. Um, my wife did last evening. Um, she picked the um, telephone up after it rang and somebody just, the voice just said, you're dead. Simple as that. And she reported the matter to the police. Mr Hillier is determined to hold on to his position. He's been vigorously canvassing support over the past weeks. He could survive the six-month ban from football by installing a caretaker chairman. His future, though, lies in the hands of his four fellow directors. Nick Arkell, Gary Herbert and Colin Howard have until now supported Mr Hillier, with Lionel Smart a lone opponent. It would need two of the directors to withdraw support for Mr Hillier to be voted out. But there are still two other vital factors. The Football League said today their investigation is continuing into alleged under-the-counter payments to players. And senior inland revenue officers are also holding an inquiry into the same matter. Only when both have reached a conclusion will Mr Hillier's future become clear. David Passmore, BBC West, Swindon.